Hey guys, Dabuki here once again. It is time for another Lost Ark video. I am here on my sharpshooter and I wanted to do a little build guide video for sharpshooter. I just recently hit tier 3 here, 1342 item level, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about my engravements, my stats, my skill build, and my playstyle in chaos dungeons as well as raids. Um, and how I differ in, in the style of that. And then at the very end, I kind of want to go over a little bit of my thoughts and opinions on the class, the pros and the cons, as well as kind of why Sharpshooter is maybe more of a rare class. Uh, if you kind of have been realizing, not many people pick Sharpshooter to play. So I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about that too and just my thoughts. So please do keep in mind though, before I get into this, is that um, I just recently hit tier three. So my stats are not where I want them to be, but I'll go ahead and talk a little bit on what I'm trying to focus on. So definitely uh, don't follow exactly what I'm doing because there's a lot of placeholders at the moment. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, engravements and combat stats. I'll go ahead and go into the engravements first. I am playing a death strike sharpshooter which i think to be honest both um class engravements are very viable death strike is just more bursty loyal companion is going to be more of a constant um damage output and a lot more i guess uh, utility i would say so first of all death strike level three when you shoot out your hawk with last rush and you hit your boss or the, the enemy that you're focusing then you will go ahead and do 40 percent more damage to that boss for eight seconds you'll see a little target that goes above their heads and all the damage that you do will do 40 percent more damage which is incredible and then what's really really great about death strike is that after you use last rush which pretty much depletes your whole hawk meter it will actually replenish it by 50 percent so timed right and if your build is good you can constantly have death strike up for loyal companion it's, it's kind of got the same concept of you're putting a dot on your targets here, but you got an AOE instead. So you're focusing more on having your hawk out for a longer duration of time, and you'll put a plus 14 additional damage buff um, on those uh, on the enemies that you're hitting. So it's a more consistent damage. This is kind of the safer build, in my opinion, is Loyal Companion. And also, all your party members will benefit from having that damage boost as well. As of Death Strike, you will only be the one that's benefiting from Death Strike. For the combat engravements, I am focusing on Hitmaster. Hitmaster is really great. Max Hitmaster plus 16 attack, and that is not for frontal attacks or back attacks, which sharpshooters really, that's the benefits of sharpshooter is that we just attack and all attacks do big damage. So you don't have to be front, back, so positioning doesn't really matter. The ones that I'm gonna be probably focusing on next that I don't really have at the moment leveled in is Grudge. This is probably common for a lot of classes. This is gonna be really great for bossing. I would recommend getting Grudge after level two though. Um, level one Grudge is just really, the negative on it is a little bit too much in my opinion the incoming damage plus 20 percent the trade-off for the damage plus four percent is just not worth it and then i'd probably be using curse doll as my next um my next node here this is just straight up attack power plus 16 percent but you got some healing negative buffs there where you'll take 25 percent less healing um so pretty much the hitmaster is like the better curse doll for sharpshooters but this is just a nice damage boost in my opinion if you wanted to fill out some more engravement slots so that's the engravements for the combat stats i am focusing on three crit specialization and swiftness which is probably pretty similar to a lot of classes so crit pretty self-explanatory here that just increases your crit rate which is going to be really important for sharpshooters since we have a lot of tripods that deal with crit damage and crit rates so this is going to synergize really well specialization very important as well this is going to affect how fast your hawk meter is gained and this is also going to affect your silver master tripod skills which we'll get into during the skill build section when you hear me talking about silver master skills the specialization will affect it and help it charge your skills even faster and lastly swiftness swiftness gives you attack speed move speed and skill cooldown which is all very important for sharpshooters being able to just put out more damage i think swiftness will do the trick for you so my thought is that if your specialization meter is charging fast enough 
um, you could probably go ahead and stop putting into specialization and put into swiftness and kind of focus on crit swiftness or crit specialization depending on where you're at with your hawk meter being charged. I'm going to go ahead and start moving into the skill build now. I want to just try to get through this as quickly as possible. There's a lot to talk about I feel like with the skills but I'll just focus on a few of them and if you guys have any more questions you can always look it up on maxroll.gg I'll post that in the description that's where I got my skill build from but I'll go ahead and just kind of talk a little bit about my own thoughts on some of these skills as well as what I've been leveraging here so really quick here atomic arrow is number one snipe we got arrow wave deadly slash moving slash blade storm sharpshooter charge shot with the second awakening skill of golden eye so going into a little bit more depths on these skills i want to start it off with atomic arrow atomic arrow is a really important skill this can be changed out with rapid shot i think these two work pretty much the same um the only reason why i was using atomic arrow over rapid shot was that this has some stagger which is very important for sharpshooters to be able to get some stagger out because that's what one of our weaknesses is just having really low stagger so we're gonna have stagger here on atomic arrow the reason why these two skills are really important is because of amplified damage both of these have it for their tier one um, tripod and what this does is it increases the damage done to foes by plus six percent on hit well this is on hit and this is on explosion which this actually does synergize pretty well with charge shots as well because we have just a lot of charging skills um but i think rapid shot you can put out constantly uh, or consistent more dps just because of the lower cooldown and i think it will synergize well with the bleed rune too which you want to be running on one of these the next skills i want to talk about are moving slash blade storm and the deadly slash these are going to be your bread and butter for sharpshooters this is you're going to love and hate these skills because these skills are counteracting on how archers should be acting <laughs> um, these skills require you to get in up close and personal so how this works is the combo is moving slash then you blade storm and then you finish it off with a deadly slash so why i think that these three skills are pretty important in the death strike and loyal companion builds is because these three skills have a tripod called silver master which silver master will increase your hawk meter gauge by a certain amount on hit and that's really strong being able to just have a really fast charge on your hawk meter so this skill you know can get you in and out the, the problem is is that you have to hit the target with moving slash so that's why this is kind of getting you in situations um, and you're gonna be getting right up on that boss you're going to be using that blade storm spinning on that boss all the tripods on here are synergizing with silver master just to increase the duration of the spins as well as the number of hits and then you're just finishing off with that deadly slash to get the extra silver master proc deadly slash is really good too because there is a counter on here so you're able to counter bosses which this is a very challenging counter to get off to be honest but it's a very rewarding one if you can the skill itself is probably one of the most lackluster skills it's literally you just swinging a dagger like a really small dagger so um it kind of sucks and i really am excited to hopefully change this out if i get like the wealth rune or something but that's just kind of some theories that i'm messing with um seeing if i could do that like change it out for another dps skill if i had a little bit more charge rate on a different skill that's kind of all i wanted to talk about the skills i think the other ones are pretty self-explanatory snipe is going to be your main main skill you're going to love and hate this skill just because you re you're required to charge it and you're going to be interrupted so many times charging the skill that's why positioning i think is so important but you're going to have things that will really help you charge faster but if you can get the skill off and rotate it into your your rotation of skills it's so powerful it's, it's a really big hitting skill and it feels so satisfying to get the skill off so i've been learning to love it more but at the beginning it was a really frustrating skill to try to leverage and I was like this is our main skill that really sucks so now I want to talk a little bit about the playstyle of chaos dungeons mobbing versus bossing so I think like before when I was in tier 1 tier 2 I was kind of messing around with having loyal companion as my mobbing skill build and then death strike as my single targeting like bossing skill build but right now the content that I've been I guess experiencing 
I don't really feel like I need the loyal companion to be helping out with mobbing. I think sharpshooters has a pretty good kit just in general for mobbing. So I do have two skill builds though that I will use for mobbing versus just bossing. Um, and they're pretty much the same. It's just I change out deadly slash for claymore mine and then I changed out sharpshooter for arrow shower which arrow shower just provides a lot more mobbing and I think if I'm able to get my wealth rune possibly I might even use um, arrow shower as like a bossing skill later on if I can kind of incorporate that arrow shower is really good uh, just does a lot of constant damage you can increase the duration increase the the hits and it's it's a really nice really nice skill to have so people ask a lot like how is mobbing with sharpshooters um i think they're really good so i haven't really experienced though like many classes that's the problem i have a sorceress alt but i don't really use her that much and i think sharpshooters can mob um pretty nicely sorceress of course is a very smooth and fluid class like i i just compared to a sharpshooter but sharpshooters still can hold their own in those chaos dungeons i'm able to farm them pretty well i think just being able to cycle through the skills so mobbing wise you know pretty much just be pushing all your skills out i think i really like to use arrow shower uh, first because arrow shower will lock the enemies down in place it'll stun them which will allow you to kind of set up with your snipe um, you can charge your skill up or whatever other skills that you need to kind of unleash but arrow shower i think is really nice in there just to lock down those mobs so that you're not getting completely overrun and that's pretty much it for the the mobbing wise i think it's uh, pretty self-explanatory you just kind of throw out all your spells that you can um, just kind of try to synergize your arrow shower with another skill in there i think sharpshooters do just fine with mobbing so now bossing so of course bossing i think is like the most fun thing to do with sharpshooters if you get like a really good skill rotation and you're in the flow you can really feel it um i think it's just really satisfying and rewarding it's a really enjoyable time for me to try to like get the most efficient damage out get the skills out but it's super challenging too especially with the death strike build so i want to talk a little bit about it though a little bit about the the thoughts into bossing at the very start when you enter the boss run your hawk meter will be at zero this is like a cold time for sharpshooters um, when your sharpshooter is cold is like after you die or when you first enter the boss um, I would recommend, you know, on the way, if you're doing a guardian raid, to try to charge your hawk meter up a little bit on the ads that are around. You know, swing your deadly slash at them, or put your moving uh, your moving slash uh, into a mob that's like on the way to the the boss itself, just to try to get that little edge of getting your hawk meter charged up. During the cold time of your sharpshooter, though, just unleash your skills. Make sure all your silver master skills are on cooldown. Moving slash, blade storm deadly slash that's going to be your primary focus on just trying to get your initial hawk meter up but don't be afraid to be using your other skills in there when you can but try to always open up as well with your atomic arrow or rapid shot to make sure that you're putting on that amplified damage so this is just going to be for death strike mainly talking about death strike my play style so now you're hot and i want to talk a little bit about the rotation of bossing all right so now you got your atomic arrow you're going to launch that out you're gonna have to hit the boss all right it's kind of a skill shot so make sure that does land once the atomic arrow hits then you're gonna pop your your hawk out and you're gonna push z get your hawk spinning on there then right away you're gonna burst with x to death strike and now you're gonna start opening up with your burst so the first burst is gonna be snipe snipe is an important one to get out as soon as possible it's the charging make sure you're in a good spot to do so and then i like to just follow it up with a charge shot then i like to go ahead and hit it with the arrow wave hit it three times and then follow it up with a quick sharpshooter which will shoot those really quick arrows out to finish up your burst if you do it well and if you do it fast enough your duration of death strike will last for that whole burst so you can burst ideally in eight seconds and six of those seconds you'll have the atomic arrow debuff on there as well so i want to talk a little bit about that though so the atomic arrow does have a delay on when it explodes the arrow will hit and then it'll be a few seconds two seconds and then it will explode which actually synergizes really well with the burst mechanics because um, it'll give you time to get your death strike blow out before the atomic arrow explodes so that you'll have more bursting time with that extra 6% on there. So ideally you'll have 46% of a burst there, which is really powerful. So right after your burst is finished, 
your movement skills, your silver master skills will be off cooldown. So you can kind of see how this rotation will fit in. And then you're going to go ahead and do it again. You're going to moving slash, get in there close as possible, safe as possible. That's that's the key word there. Blade storm, spin on that boss, get that silver master proccing, hit it with that deadly slash, get another silver master. And ideally at that point, if your build is good, you got your items, your silver hawk should be charged up fully. You can launch that, all your burst skills will be off cooldown, and you rinse and you repeat. And that's the burst of sharpshooters, which is very powerful. And if you can kind of get in that flow and that dance, read the boss, know the mechanics, understand the attack patterns, position yourself well with the mobility skills, um, you'll be in a really good position. But that being said, I think really good sharpshooters are able to dynamically change their playstyle do little filler skills here and there without throwing the rotation completely off. When I first started playing sharpshooter and if I missed messed up like one like rotation, I would like wait a whole bunch of time before I even launched a skill out because I was afraid of messing up the next rotation. But if you're able to kind of read the class, get a feel for it, then it doesn't matter if you miss a skill here and there. If you get interrupted by snipe, if you go in with your silver master skills and your hawk's not fully charged, you got to be able to kind of play on your feet and be able to mold to the situations that are given to you. So that's pretty much the bursting mechanics for sharpshooters. You know, you get your silver hawk out as, as soon as possible, you get your burst out, you rotate it, and you're going to have a real good time, you know, and you can really feel when you're doing some good damage. It's hard though. I'm still not at that point yet where I'm comfortable of being able to do consistent damage, but when I am able to it just it feels pretty great i hope this video isn't too long i felt like i've been talking for a really long time so i hope the future self of me will cut out a lot of this video but i want to talk now finish off this video about the pros and the cons and just sharpshooter a little bit more about sharpshooter my thoughts on this class so first of all you're probably understanding that sharpshooter is a very rare class and not a lot of people pick it a lot of people ask me why why do not a lot of people play sharpshooters and the reason being is because, to, to be honest, it's not a flashy class. There's a lot of lackluster skills. There's not like big flashy things happening on the screen. It's really hard to get your skills out because of the cast animations. There's a lot of cast animations for sharpshooters. Every skill, there will be a little bit of delay. Not saying that it doesn't feel smooth. I think that it's like a weird delay smooth that it feels like when you can kind of get into that rhythm that dance with it then it feels good but it's not going to be as fluid as some of the other classes um and the damage output is not as consistent as you could probably understand that now um with just needing to be able to get your burst and <laughs> being able to get your skills in line so it might not be as consistent especially if you go with a death strike build it's a little bit harder to play also there's another big thing that it really irked me when I first started playing sharpshooter is that this class when I when I play an archer first of all I love archers I go for archers for any game that I'm playing fell in love with archers because of Legolas but that's a whole different story I'll say that sharpshooters are not a hundred percent range which that was like pretty annoying for me at the start there's a lot of skills that require you to be up close um, as you saw just procking your silver master skills it requires you to literally be kissing the boss and that's like a play style that really took me some time to get used to because sharpshooters in my mind is like 60 percent range and 40 percent melee so you're getting really up close but it's been growing on me though that play style being able to position yourself well get in there strategically do your little poke damage or whatnot that you need to do and be able to get out successfully Put some distance between you and that boss and burst out that damage because i do feel like sharpshooters does have like one of the longest range skills in the game which is snipe you can literally snipe like outside of your screen the charge shot can go outside of your screen so um we do have some really big range it's just our play style requires to get really close and then really far um so it's an interesting play style you can really kind of just mess with it but that's another reason why I think sharpshooters were just not as popular. Like, I really hope that they'll release a female archer and she'll just be like super BA, full ranged, um, and just awesome. But that's, that's again, another topic that we won't really get into right now. More on the pros and cons. Archers have high crit, super great mobility, pretty decent AOE, could hold their own, you know, in, in dungeons and so forth. Big burst damage, really big burst damage if you can get it out. Cons, of course, is just the cast animation skills, 
um, needing to melee for part of your skill build there. Also another con that's been kind of the, the meme of my stream I feel like is I really don't like the outfits for sharpshooters. I think archers are like super sexy but for some reason like all the skins, the cash shop skins and some of them the default skins that archers had uh, were just not really doing it for me but I do like this one and uh, this one's not bad this tier 3 skin this one I've actually been enjoying I think this is my one of my more favorite ones excited to see her, see what the legendary tier 3 looks like but like all the cash shop skins so far they kept making him look like a gunner because this is like a gunner style class right so he looks like a cowboy archer which I, I don't really want in my archers but <laughs> that's just personal preference thing overall experience with sharpshooter has just been incredible um right when i started playing sharpshooter i think like in tier one phase before tier one like leveling up the sharpshooter really easy to level up because obviously there's a lot of storylining and mobbing that is required and out of the box sharpshooter just has some great mobbing capability uh tier one was a little bit more of a struggle i'm trying to learn the bossing mechanics as well as just juggling that um, death death strike versus loyal companion and understanding that man it's kind of hard to play sharpshooter like this is starting to now feel i feel the difficulties of playing sharpshooter because everyone else is kind of like flying around being able to launch all their skills really quickly and i'm kind of needing to strategically shoot my skills out yet still be fast and efficient with it tier two was a lot more enjoyable got into some big raids and really felt myself starting to learn the class and appreciate it for what it is tier three is just it's the best time that i've been having so far with sharpshooter um really pushing the limits focusing on the stats experimenting a lot on the different styles and what the stats does for the sharpshooter and noticing that difference just feels incredible i will stop talking now guys i really appreciate you watching this video i hope it was helpful and informational again all that information will probably be on maxwell.gg i just kind of probably extended whatever was on there but if you want a tldr it is on maxwell.gg i probably should have said that in the beginning of this video <laughs> so, but really do appreciate you guys getting through it i hope you do give sharpshooter a chance um but don't worry if you don't like it because the class is is very unique it's an acquired taste so don't force yourself to like a class ever i think it really does need to kind of meld with you or somehow um like kind of follow your play style and you need to find the specialty in a class that's what makes a class really special and you to have the best time possible so that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Boki. much love one love and i'll be seeing you guys later goodbye